All right. Good morning, Good morning church. church. How's it? How's it? How's it? Oh, is it September already? Wow, this year Ooh, is flying soon by. Christmas. <laughs> I want to praise and thank God for this beautiful day. Thank you guys for joining us. Those of you online, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Labor Day weekend. Are you ready to labor and worship the Lord? No. Amen. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I know, some of us still waking up. Me too. Uh, waking up, waking up. All right, Lord, wake us up. Yeah. You want to stand? Feel free to stand. You want to sit? That's fine too. As we come into your prayer.
up man with some beautiful worship songs we're going to continue to give all the glory to our king give them all we're going to give them all today right Lord, we give you all this morning as we draw closer to you, Lord, come into our hearts. Have your way. We open our hearts all to you, Lord. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Draw me close to you. Never let me go Lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire You are my desire No one else would do. No one else would do. There's nothing else could take your place. 
to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find a way. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship.
Let's give God the praise. Thank you, Lord, for this worship this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we praise you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this day. On this Labor Day, Lord, we labor in love for you. Because, Lord, you first loved us. Therefore, we must love you and love others. That's the labor we serve today, is that we serve you and we continue to reach out and lift up one another, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for this worship this morning. We thank you for the message that you have prepared for us, Lord. Bless the hearts that are here to receive you. And as we, as we um, go out through our day, we remember. The work that we do is not even compare it to what you have done for us, Lord. It's a labor of love that we work hard to serve you. And we give you the glory, the honor, and we praise. Bless our communion as we take today. And bless the hearts that are here to receive you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you honor. We give you all praise and glory. For you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Father in heaven. We praise you in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. Huh? What are we doing? We're together again. That's right, we're together again. Well, it's greeting time. You know how it goes. We like to greet each other this morning with at least a smile. And maybe it's a little bit of a labor day that we actually turn to the person on your right and the person on your left and say, Hey, Auntie, you look beautiful today. Yeah? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're together again. Together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God is good. All the and time. all the time. God is amen. Good. Amen. Hey, um, a few announcements. It is Communion Sunday today. So we're going to take communion today right after our message for today. And also let you know, every, every Tuesday we still have Bible studies online on Zoom. So if you want to join us, uh, you just get on to Zoom. Um, and when you get into Zoom, then you just join. So you want to join a room, and this is the ID you put in, 337-083-9458. And you link into that Zoom room, and we'll let you into the room, and you can see all the craziness that we have there on, 
on Tuesdays. All right. Also, this is where at the end of our Bible studies, we usually we, um, do prayer requests to everybody. Um, you know, because we get people from Vegas, my, my sister in Molokai, so we all, we pray on whatever prayer requests that we have. And then whatever prayer requests I get here, I share with them so that we get more um, prayer warriors for our prayers. So if anything, come join us. All right, so it's coming today. We're going to get right into our message. And here's our, our little girl, Shelly. <laughs> Go get him, our little girl. Um, no, you got any more announcements? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a special um, parking lot food out there, too. So if you're not, and if you're kind of tired of the ones in here, they also got some vendors outside today, so. I saw that on the news. Yeah, yeah, ginger and garlic thing out there with shrimp or, you know, like the ginger chicken. Yes, they have the ginger chicken. They have the ginger and and shrimp. I seen them on the news this morning, so I might take long for come back when I go take my stuff to the car. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get into our scripture reading for today. <laughs> Aya ko ka ko helo helo ana iloko o ka epesu tole e Paulo ka luna o lelo iko kolosa mokuna e kolu pauku iva ka hua kumaha lua kumaha lua a hiki ika pauku iva kalua kumalima pene i palapala ia ena kawa e hoolohe mana me a pau iko ko mahaku Mau haku make kino. Aole ka ho ia io makaman hea he mea ho le ale ho o le ale a kanaka la. A ka me ka na au ho o kahi e ho po hopo ana i ke akua. A ao o ao ka. O ko mea kahana aya ai apau. E hana aku no ya me kana au. Men mehea me la no kahaku a ole hoi no kanaka. Ua ike hoi o ko na kahaku mai e lua a mai ana ya ko au ko ka uku eli mai ana. No ka mea o ho o kaua aku o ko Na kahaku na Kristo. Aka o kamehana heva la e ho o pai yaya no kaheva ana ihana ai. A ole loa e mana o eva eva ya mai na kino. In Colossians 3 22-25, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Verse 14. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ that you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Shall we bow our hearts for prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this time. It, as a reverence to you, we come to church and we lay it at the feet of Jesus. We lay out the burdens of the world and we leave it out the door. We just serve you. We give you our heart, our mind, and our soul to worship you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory as we get into the word that will feed our heart and soul to carry us throughout our daily needs and walks. Lord, we thank you for this time. And we, we need you. And we always, we always would trust you. And we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right. Thank you, honey. 
I was about giving her a hand. Yeah. <laughs> so my kai or lelo. I gotta practice some more. Okay. Pigeon next week. Okay, we're gonna do pigeon next week, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, you know, on this Labor Day, um, I had this message that was given to me uh, almost a month ago. And, you know, it was about laboring, laboring in, in God. And um, I said, well, I better wait. Because I know Labor Day was coming up, so and put this on the side and uh, saved it for today's uh, message. And it's amazing how God works. Um, so when I went back to it, and and then it became like a new series, Labor of Love. So a new series, this this series is is going to be Labor of Love. But the title of our message today um, is entitled "Giving God My Work." Giving God My Work, and it comes from the Book of Colossians. Chapter 3. And um, I just love this message, you know, that he talks about, you know, back in the days they talk about slavery. He says, slaves obey your early masters in everything and do it. Not only when, when their eyes are on you, yeah, and to curry their favor, but in sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. You know, sometimes we, we, we talk, and I think when I first thought about this, I thought about that's how we are at work, yeah? What is the thing when the, when the, um, when the cat, when we, what is it? When the cats are away and our mice come out and play, right? What does that mean? Like when the boss night here, we all, all the, uh, all the employees, yeah, they didn't make any kind, yeah, act up. Uh, but as soon as the boss comes, who everybody's like doing their job, right? But when they go on slack, yes, yeah, guys. And sometimes we do that with the Lord. But in the beginning of my message, you know, I'm going to read this part. It says that the magazine I was writing for felt important. So I struggled to present the best possible article I could for a high-ranking editor. Feeling pressured to meet her standards, I kept rewriting my thoughts and ideas. But what was my problem? Was it my challenging topic? Or was my real worry personal? Would the editor, uh, editor approve of me or not just my words? For answers to our job worries, Paul gives trustworthy instructions. In a letter to the Colossian church, Paul urges believers to work not for approval of people, but for God. As the apostle said, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ, Jesus, that you are serving. So this morning, we're going to look into, there's so many, but I'm just going to look into three biblical principles as we, labor, as we labor for the Lord. And number one is, if the Lord is not in the center of it, your work will be in vain. And we'll just take that first verse. Slaves, obey your early masters in everything and do it. Not only when their eyes, or not only when they're looking or their eyes are upon you and to curry their favor. Yes, so not only when they're looking so it make you look good, but with sincerity in heart and reverence for the Lord. Yeah. So, Biblical definition of uh, labor, yeah, to to work, great effort, toiling, and grind away. That's the definition biblically of labor, and we are called to labor for the Lord. What does that work consist of? 
We like to say to share the gospel, right? That's what we all call to do. In, so, in whatever form or way that God blesses us with, you know, whatever your talent is, we use that talent to share the gospel, to share the good news of the word. And in order for us to do a good job, yeah, we cannot do that job alone. How many of you like to do the job alone by yourself? Huh? Yeah, some of us do. I used to be like that. And every time I try to do it by myself, it does, just doesn't come out quite good enough, I think. And a lot of times when we do stuff like that, we end up running into to stumbling blocks, issues, Hassles, haters, grumblers, lazy guys. You, you run into so much issues. Why? Because we live in this world of issues. Yeah. And so God is telling us today in this verse. Let's go back to this verse. He said, don't do your job to please anybody else but God. Don't do the job to please anybody. Some of us, we do the job because we like please our boss. Some of us, we do the job, you know, the honey-do list because we like please the wife or your spouse. But God is saying, if you're going to do it, do it as if he was doing it for me. Yeah, that's what God is telling us today. We are called to labor for the Lord. And God gives us jobs. He gives us things to do. And not just, you know, our main calling is to, to do the gospel. But we live in the world. We got to live. We got to eat. We got to work, right? And he's telling us in whatever we do, do it as if he's doing it for me. And why is that? Because we are called to share the gospel. When we go to our daily jobs, we're sharing the gospel. We're doing physical work. But if we do it, because in our back of our mind, we know we're doing this because God has given us the job. He has given us a job. Some of us, we feel like we may not like that job. But God has given us a job. Are we, you know, like how, I'm going to use our children, because a lot of them spoiled. We give them one gift, yeah? We give them like one uh, MP3 player, and they're not, they're, not ha they're not happy. And they let you know. They let you know. Or they say, oh, junk, this is not an iPod. They don't, they don't realize that how much, how much sweat, how much effort you put just to get them that. But to them, it's junk. Yeah? Because in the back of their mind, they're not thinking about it. And that's the same thing how we react. When we go to this job that God had blessed us with a job. Yeah? You could, you could not have a job. You could be struggling. But God blessed us with a job. And we go to work every day not wanting to be there. Amazing, yeah? We go to work being ungrateful or being blessed to have a job. And that's, that's how we are today. And God is saying, why is that? And, and why is that? Because God is not in the center of our lives. If God was in the center of our life, in our work, in everything we do, we'd be blessed. To show up at work. I'd be blessed to get up and go work. You know, being a musician, you don't know when your next job. I'm blessed every day that God gives me a job. I hate some of the jobs. You know, I think I'm being abused at some of the jobs, but it's a job. It gets, it gets 
um, a living for me and my wife. It provides for our needs. Yeah? See, we pray to God, God, bless us. Oh, we need money to pay our bills. And then God give you a job. I don't like that job. Oh, I don't like that job. That job, excuse my language, that job sucks. I don't like go. Oh, honey, I can stay home. Oh, honey, stay home, stay home. See how we, we, we don't, because why? We're not thinking that, hey, God blessed us. We ask, and God will bless us with a job. Maybe we better be more specific when we ask. Lord, bless me you on job that does it sucks, please. Right? But we never. We just said, Lord, bless us because we got to pay our bills. And God provided and then what? We automatically turn. Because why? We're not thinking. We're not having him in the center of our lives. When we get up in the morning, he should be right there, right beside us, waiting for us to say, good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day. You know, good morning, Lord. Thank you. Today was so awesome. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for not making my car stall on the freeway <laughs> like Friday. You know, I, I was telling aunt, one of the aunties that I always run into in the morning. I said, oh, I almost had to catch right with you guys on the handy van. Huh? Yeah, because my car never like start Friday and die out. But you know, God is good. God is so good. God said, turn off your AC. Maybe the bugger work. So we did. Turn off the AC and start up again. Okay, let's go home. Let's just, Lord, Lord, just take us home, Lord. Just take us home. And he did. And I praise and thank God. But see, God has got to be in the center of our lives. Because if God was in the center, we would have been, I would have been pulling hands over there. We probably would have been arguing on the seat. See, your fault. That's why we start. Right? Yeah. We would have to get out and push it and be hating life because it was so hot. Right? It's so hot out there. This is in the, what, 1 o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is out there. So, but, you know, God blesses us with stuff. And we need to allow him. Yeah? What is this? If the Lord... Is not in the center of our lives, yeah, then our work becomes in vain because why we're not thinking that we're blessed to be work, to have a job. We're blessed to be blessed. You know, I, I love running to the auntie this morning. How you auntie? Oh, it's such a blessing. You know, God bless me. You know, how many of us always think like that? How many of us think that, oh, God bless, oh, I'm working hard, you know, this. I'm taking care of kids. And I say, oh, the guys make me work hard. I make them fall asleep and I, I pass out too. But then she came back and said, you know what? That's okay because it's a blessing because I get paid good for that. See, how many of us think like that? That God blesses us. And then the other auntie goes, oh, yeah, she always blessing people. And she bless. And I said, you know, praise God because you know why? You bless and God just continues to bless you, and you are blessed. And she goes, yes, I'm blessed. And that's how it is. We need to be a blessing. That's what God's called. That's what is the gospel. The gospel is just to be a blessing. To be a blessing comes in many forms. It's to show up and work, even though you don't really like the job. But show up with Jesus in the center of your heart. And you walk in that door and say, hey, good morning, Good morning, everybody. How was your night? You know, just to be that shining light, be that blessing, because you never know. That's sharing the gospel. And when you come in there being a blessing, somebody might just trip out and just say, oh, thanks, sir. But you lift on my day because I was hating coming to work this morning. But I'm so glad you came work. And now I'm happy to be at work. That's the part about sharing with God in the cell. Let me share you a scripture. You can read along with me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Read with me. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You show up. And you just 
show up with the Lord. Yeah. Hard work. It's a blessing. When you power the day, you're like, wow, Lord, thanks for getting me through this day. You know, when I get you in a hard job, <laughs> when I got to do a job, I got to walk super far with all my equipment. And by the time we actually even, before we even start, I'm already sweating. You know, the kind, that's why I got to wear bigger shirts because, you know, when you sweat and you got to play music and that shirt starts sticking to your body. Oh, it's it's really uncomfortable to sing. You know, that's why we always, I always try to go early because at least give me at least, after I sit up, I get about at least 15 minutes to half an hour for kind of dry off a little bit. Yeah, so when you start singing, you feel fresh again. But God is so good, you know, that he gets me through these. I don't know how I do it. You know, sometimes I'm walking in some, not a handicap friendly area. You know, the ground is so unstable. And I got to bring my, and that's why I bring my own chair too. Because, you know, amazing how they get, they don't think about musicians sometimes. They put you in the most farthest area, in the most... I remember playing at this one place up at the top of... Uh, what is that place where everybody go look the mountain? The round top, round top. All the way on the top there. And then they get inside, and you gotta, I got to park outside the gate. <laughs> because if I drive inside, you got to drive all the way down and walk up the hill. So my cousin said, oh, park outside the gate. So it was good to park outside the gate. And the walk was maybe from here to Fun Factory, which is not that far. But when the road is all gravel and you get closer and they have the grass area, but they get like a, the walkway is, is bricks. Or not bricks, but rocks in the ground. So you're, roll, you're rolling stuff. You ain't going to go because stuck in the ground. You got to lift them up, stuck in the ground, lift them up. You know, and so it took me like about almost 20 minutes to get there. But, and it's muggy hot. I got there, and then I, where the stage is, I'm sitting down, and I turn behind. It's like the hill. Like if, if, if the wind blow and I fall back, I'm going to roll down this steep hill. You know, but hey, praise, I thank, praise and thank God that I got through it. I got through it. I got home, and I got safe. And it was a blessing, so. You know, and that's how we got to show up with Jesus. If Jesus wasn't in my life, oh, my gosh, I probably would have said, I ain't doing this job. Turn around and drive back off. That's how bad the, some other places are. But you know what? I said, God, you bless me with this job. Just help me get you this. Yeah. We got to have him in the center of our lives. He helps us overcome these obstacles. Yeah. He calls for us to do our best. In everything. And he's got the rest. He says, you do your best. Let me take care of the rest. And he will help us with the rest. When we do these things, we do it like as God says, hey, do it like you're doing it for me. Why? Because God is pleased. He is so pleased when we do something that we don't like do, but we know. That we blessed by him to do it. And it's what we call to do. He calls us to do stuff, to help others, to do for those in need. The first task is to keep him in the center of our whole life, in our work. Number two, be diligent in our work. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Be diligent. In Christianity, diligence is the effort to do one's part while keeping faith and resilience in God. In other words, diligence and faith are two sides of a mystery. One does not know how, despite 
one's effort. It all works out. But diligence, when combined with faith, assures spiritual success. See, a lot of times God puts us in these places and we don't know how it's going to work out. Yeah. But we put our heart and soul into doing it because we know that's where faith's kicking. And we know despite we, don't, we might think that this might not even come out all right, but you know, God put us in this position, so we put our heart to do it. And we trust that He's going to take it to rest. And when we do that, He does. Things come out. Sometimes it comes out better than we think. And if you're going to do something, do it right. You know, my dad used to always say that you can do something, do them right the first time. Right? You know, we used to do uh, all kinds of stuff, but we used to do catering back in the days because my mom used to work for Makata Catering and my dad used to, we used to help um, families who couldn't afford catering. So we used to do catering pretty much. I don't know how we became a catering company, but we did. And it was just part of life for us where your father said, go, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And next thing you know, they oh, it wasn't catering company. I never know that. <laughs> we just, just show up and do it. Like you go into one party and help out, right? And, and um, But he used to always say, hey, you're going to do something. Do them good. Because you know why? You got to think about the future. And he taught us that in life in general. Like even when you when I started um, doing music, when I was doing uh, printing, he said, you're going to do them. Do them good. So that, you know, you got to think about the future. If you're doing junk job, nobody gonna let come back. Yeah? If you food junk, they don't let come back eat over here. So we always was thought to do a good job. Take pride. A lot of you know Hawaiians get plenty pride. Yeah? But sometimes we get the wrong kind of pride. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get the wrong kind of pride. Yeah. The pride is the bad pride. But the pride you're talking about here is have pride. Is that we do a good job. You get pride in your craft. You get pride in your job. If you're going to be one, one greeter. I have pride in doing the job and try to be the best greedy you are. Yeah? If you're going to be one, one musician, try to be the best musician you are. Don't be like me. Practice on the job. <laughs> you got to practice, practice. Yeah? You're going to do a good job, do a good job. That's what God is telling us today. Keep him in a center and do your best. Be diligent to have pride in what you do. If you're going to serve God, have pride in serving God. You're going to praise him, have pride in praising him. Yeah? If you're going, if you're going to do sound, have pride. Do sound. Make sure the sound, you do your best. Make sure that, that, that you try to do your best. Yeah? Some guys... To just like show off. Yeah. We show off. We think we know everything. We think we know everything. And then show the thing. The thing is squealing all over the place. How come? Yeah. See, because they get too much pride. They think they know everything. That's the bad pride. The good pride is you might know everything, but there's always something to learn. That's the pride. You want to take pride in, in making sure you know what you're doing the best that you can. God tells us, give, take pride in what you do and give quality work no matter who it is. No matter what you're doing, no matter who it is, you take pride and do quality work. 
do as he is. And that's why he says, do it as if he was doing it for me. As if God hired you to do this job. Yeah? If you're going to do it, do it right the first time. Let me show you in Matthew 25, verse 40. It says, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You see? No matter who you did this for, you're still doing it for him. It doesn't matter if it was a top politician or if it was somebody sitting on the side of the street. If he was called to do something for them, do them as if he was doing it for Jesus. Put your heart into your labor and work. You know, I like, to me, the heart is, 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 a, is a big thing. Yeah. When we think of love, we think of hearts. Yeah. When we think of the heart and the body, that's the major function. You can do without an arm. You can do without one kidney, without an eye. But you cannot do without your heart, right? If your heart stops, your whole body stops. Your life stops. The major, the heart is the major part in serving. Yeah, with Jesus in your heart. We have the love of him. With Jesus in your heart, we can share his love with others. With Jesus in your heart, we overcome a lot of stuff. We overcome our obstacles. Love overcomes Everything. Let me share with you a scripture. 1 John 4, verse 11 and 12. He says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Verse 12. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. Yeah. You see, by loving others, that's how we know that God lives within us. And God loves the for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loves us. And when we can share that same love, that's how we know that he lives within us. Let me share one more scripture before we move on. First Peter 4, verse 8. Read with me this one. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Love is great. Love is big. Love is big time because love overcomes. But we need to do it to be diligent about it. Be diligent in all your work. Be diligent in loving others. It's not just love, love, love. Oh, everybody love, love, love. That's why some guys go, oh, you just love, 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 love. No. When you love, you take to heart. It's a sincere love. Just like you love Jesus. Like how you love your kids. That's how Jesus loves us. Even more so. Because us guys, we like lick our kids. Jesus gives us grace and he forgives us. He forgives all our sins. And because he forgives our sins, he sent his son to pay the price of all our sins. How many of us can give our, send our children to go pay the price for our sins? No. But God did. That's the kind of love he has. Let's move into our last. So, Keep them in the center of your heart and be diligent in all you do, in all your work. And the last one is, the third is to always be willing to give. See, God calls us to be giving. 
especially to those in need. And we are called to bless others. That's the part of sharing the gospel. It's also just to bless others. But we need to be willing to bless others. Not to give because we forced to give or because, oh yeah, God said I got to give. I only get $20 left, but he said give on me. So I go, I, yeah, I guess I'm going to give him. But you get changed over 20. <laughs> yeah? No, we got to be willing, see? Because if we're not willing, then it's not worth it. You might as well keep that $20. Yeah? To give without expecting, that's why these people play. What am I saying here? To give without expecting, that's why these people play with anything. I don't know what I wrote. I must have been dreaming back then or something. <laughs> I don't know what I was dreaming about. We need to be willing to give, though. Yeah, give without expecting. Because great is a reward. Not here. God said, great is our reward in heaven. What we do here is because of what we're going to get when God comes back. But in order for us to get there, yeah, in order for us to get there, we got to start building our riches here for eternal riches. Yeah, not building riches here to be here rich. Because if you hear, if you if you get rich here, good for you. But when you die, it ain't going with you. That's the difference. You be your riches, it be your eternal riches here. Because when you die, great is your reward in heaven. Eternal riches. Yeah? He also calls it that be willing to give without boasting, showing off. See, some of us would give to expect something back. And God said, no. Give freely. Some of us give to let everybody know, hey, I gave, I gave one motorcycle. To somebody who never had one. Yeah? Oh, I went to Vegas. I won a million dollars. Oh, I gave the church my 10%. Yeah, God is telling us, if you won't give, you don't have to let us know. Because the only one who needs to know is him. That's the only guy I need to know. And let me tell you this. You don't need to let him know. He already know. Because he don't want to bless you. And he knows if you're going to be willing to share that with others. Yeah? We need to give from the heart. Willingly. Openly. We give. There is that heart again. See, if we give with the heart, God is in our heart. We give freely because we know it pleases the Father. It pleases Him to know. Isn't that, is, aren't you like, when you know your child is such a good giving person, always helpful, doesn't that make you feel good as a parent? Huh? Imagine God. Bless. Because why? His children is Blessing others freely, giving people, making other people happy. Yeah, just because they love Jesus. He calls us to bless us. Let me share with you one last scripture before we wrap this all up. In Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 30. You can read along with me. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, 
it will be measured to you. Give without being expecting. Give freely. Because you know what? God is going to bless you in so much ways that it's just going to be poured into your lap. Imagine that. Yeah, being it poured into your lap. I don't know, maybe some of you might have already experienced that. Yeah, out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, I've, we've experienced that so many times. Yeah, we don't know how we're going to get you this month. You know, I mean, ever since my dad died, I mean, I feel like I could have been the next homeless person. In fact, I was and almost was again. But God is so good. He just blesses. Um, I mean, it's hard to explain unless you experience the blessing. It's really hard to explain. But God is so good that as we stand firm on him and know that we trust that God says, he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake in us. He'll always be there. Maybe in the 11 and a half hour, maybe right the minute before the 12th hour. But he shows up. He shows up. He never fails to show up. You know, God is good all the time. Reflecting on Paul's wisdom, we can stop struggling to look good in the eyes of earthly bosses. For certain, we honor them as people and we seek to give them our best. But if we work as for the Lord, asking him to lead and anoint our work for him, he'll shine a light on our efforts, our rewards, our job pressures ease and our assignments are completed. Even more, we'll one day hear him say to us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Well, I'm going to end this message with a, a, a story. It's been a while since I said a story, right? It's been a couple of weeks. I usually do one every, every message. You know, the stories I, I just that God gives me, it kind of helps. Hopefully it helps. Sometimes, you know, like, you know, my old pastor was like uh, six sticks. So what that means is if there's a, a, a message you want to give out, like, um, like um, God is good, then you present God is good six different ways. So they kind of stick. So when you leave this place, what was the message? Oh, God is good. Yeah. So I always like to, to leave a story. And this story is, uh, the author is unknown, but it's called The Enemy's Perfect Plan. Let's not allow the enemy to distract us. Satan called a worldwide convention. In his opening address to his evil angels, he said, we can't keep Christians from going to church. We can't cre keep Christian believers from reading their Bibles and knowing the truth. We can't even keep a Christian from conserv conservative values, but we can do something else. We can keep them from forming an intimate, abiding relationship experience in Christ. If they gain that connection with Jesus, our power over them is broken. So let them go to church let them have their conversation, conservative lifestyles, but steal their time so they can't gain the, that experience in Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do, angels. Distract every Christian from gaining hold of their Savior and maintaining that vital connection throughout their day. How shall we do this, shouted these angels. Keep Christians busy in a non-essential in in the non-essentials of life and invent unnumbered schemes to occupy their minds, he answered. Tempt them to spend, 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 then borrow, borrow, borrow. Convince Christian wives to go to work for long hours 
and the husbands to work six or seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day, so they can afford their lifestyles, keep them from spending time with their children as their family fragments. Soon their homes will offer no escape from the pressures of work. Overstimulate their mind so that they cannot hear that still small voice. Entice them to play on, the, on their phones, listen to their radio or digital media whenever they drive to keep the TV, CDs, and their PCs going constantly in their homes. And see to it that every store and restaurant in the world plays non-biblical music constantly. This will jam their minds and break their union with Christ. Fill their coffee tables with magazines and newspapers. Pound their mutts with 24 hours a day. Oh, with news 24 hours a day, sorry. Invade their driving moments with billboards. Flood their mailboxes with junk mail, sweepstakes, Mail a lot of catalogs and every kind of news newsletter and promotional offering, free products, services, and false hopes. Even in their recreation, let them be excessive. Have Christians return to their recreation exhausted, disquieted, and unprepared for the coming week. Don't let them go out in nature to reflect on God's wonders. Send them to amusement parks, sporting events, concerts, and movies instead. And when they meet their inspirational spiritual fellowship, involve them in gossip and small talk so they leave with troubled consciences and unsettled emotions. Let them be involved in soul winning, but crowd their lives with so many good causes they have no time to seek power from Christ. Soon they will be working in their own strength, sacrificing their health and family unity for the good of the cause. It was quite a convention in the, in the end, and the evil angels went eagerly to their assignments, causing Christians everywhere to get busy, 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 and rush here and there. Has the devil been successful at his schemes? You be the judge. Let us pray. Lord, I want to praise and thank you for this message that you had given us today. And we just give you all the glory, give you the honor and the praise. We thank you for that. Just that thought of three things that we can think of to keep us grounded, to keep us together, to keep us constantly on the right track as we labor for love is to remember that we need to keep you in the center of our entire lives in the center of all that we do 24-7 we need to keep you there because we know that you are the one that will help us get through the day you're the one that will help us overcome all the, dev the devil's schemes and you're the one that would help us to remember why we labor and who we labor for. And Lord, let us be diligent in all that we do, that we put our heart and soul as if we would do things that we know that we're doing it because of you and doing it for you. Let us always be giving, giving of our, our time, giving of our stuff, giving of our finances to help others, to help those in need, as you call us to do. But keeping the faith that you will provide for all of our needs. And the more we bless others, the more you can bless us. You cannot bless us if we're just full of stuff. We need to get rid of that. We need to share that. And that's what we call to share the gospel, is to share the love with others that you have called us to do. 
Thank you, Jesus, for always being in our lives, Lord. Let us not conform to this worldly stuff, but let us be transformed in the renewing of our mind to live lives as you've called us to do, with you in the center of it. Thank you for the hearts that are here to receive your message. We give you the honor and praise. And we thank you for our worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. Amen. We're going to go right into our um, communion service. And my wife is going to pass out our communion elements as we sing this next song. Our scripture reading for our community service is in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. On to, I'll read up to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is the body of which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he supped, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you, drink, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Before we take our communion this morning, we're going to do our sinner's prayer and and. and Ask the Lord for forgiveness so we can cleanse ourselves to receive his body and blood. So repeat after me. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I am wrong in thy commandments. I'm wrong in thy commandments. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. And cleanse us from all of our sins. And cleanse us from all of our sins. Lord, come into our hearts. And take control. Take control. I receive you, I receive you as, my as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us all pray. Lord, bless these elements that we have this morning. That as we take it, that we remember what you have done for us when you sent your Son to pay the price for all of our sins, Lord. So, Lord, we take this bread and this cup, and as we take it. We thank you for your gift that you have given to us freely to pay the price for all of our sins and give us the hope of eternal life, our salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 
Let us all raise the bread. Those of you at home, you can do so. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of our sins. Take, eat, and we remembrance of him. Amen. Let's all eat together. All right, let us all raise our cup. This cup of the new covenant, which represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Take, drink, in remembrance of him. Amen. I saw a drink. All right, I want to praise and thank God for this day. We thank you for our communion and, and the message we had today. And uh, want to wish you guys all a happy Labor Day. Hope you folks enjoy the rest of the day this weekend. I think most of us off tomorrow. I um, want to say hello to uh, get some family online. Uh, hello to Pastor Brian. I know my sister and my Molokai, they have their own service on first Sundays. And, um, oh, we got my cousin also from Las Vegas. So I want to say hello to uh, the people on the Nine Island, Las Vegas, uh, Maui. And I think we have Hilo too here. So I want to praise and thank God for this beautiful day. You guys continue to enjoy this day. And we're going to end our service before we do our, our last song. Let's all go to the Lord and pray one more time. Lord, we want to praise and thank you for this day and that we enjoy this Labor Day weekend and that, Lord, you just keep everyone safe. Let us all go out and share that smile. Share the gospel with one another. Just share the light that, did, um, that we, 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 we bring to remembrance that whenever we do our job, when we go back to work on Tuesday or whatever, our daily jobs or daily chores that we do, that we keep in mind that we keep you in the center of it. But let us, let us remember that we, we just go out and just do the best that we can. Let us remember that you blessed us with a job. Maybe it may not be the best job that we wanted, but it's a job that provides for our daily needs, Lord. So thank you. We thank you so much. And we do the best. And we know that, you know, you will continue to bless us. You know, we might have a not so good job now, but we know that if we do our diligent work and we do it good, and, and that you will bless us with even better, greater things to do, Lord. But let us do that without expecting anything or, or just making it known. Just doing it because we love you and we thank you for all you do for us. So on this Labor Day weekend, Lord, we just want to give you thanks. Just like Thanksgiving. We want to thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to labor in whatever, to do work. And we thank you that we can still work for you, that we can still do a job. And we thank you for giving us that day of rest. That you call us out to go work, but you give us a day of rest. And we enjoy that day of rest. Let us change our minds let us re renew our thoughts let us re revamp our lives to spend more time with family to enjoy our jobs to enjoy our kids to make the time to spend with our spouses and to be giving to others especially to those in need no matter how how they look, what color. But if 
every CME that you, you, you put it before us. Let us take the opportunity to seize that moment and labor in love for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in your precious holy name. May the blessings of Jehovah God, the Father of our Lord of love, Jesus Christ, and the love of the Holy Spirit abide with us all, now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord. What say, Lord, it's you give me life and I can't explain this. Uh, what you mean to me now, you have saved me, Lord. I give all that I have to you, and every day I can be the light of On your word, and I pray that I, that I might come to know you more. That you would guide me with every single step I take. That every day I can be light up to the word every day. It's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. Pastor Jeff Kahapea of Light and Life Ohana Church. We are located in Kapolei on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. You can reach us at hawaiianslice at gmail.com or on most social media under Light and Life Ohana Church. Please feel free to share this message. And thank you for joining us. Mahalo and aloha. Mm-hmm.